Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to our ACMS Treasury channel. And we are today going to address an interesting concept uh, of using batches to help us clarify and to be help us to um, bring clarity to the reconciling, uh, reconciling of cash and um, other types of income that we can record. So today we are going to be uh, looking at how we create three batches to record cash to record EFTs and to even record interest that we earn um, uh, in our interest bearing accounts um, a, 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 at our church. So let's have a look. And here we are going to start by creating uh, the three batches that we need. This is the third week of um, September and I'm going to open a batch for cash. So this is cash uh, envelopes. This is cash that we have collected physically at the church. We are going to have it in a separate batch. Why we do this is so that when we look at the balance of this batch, it must also equal the amount of cash that we collected and receipted on in that week. So I'm going to have this batch. And then I'm going to open a second batch. This is also possible. And in front of the description, I'm going to call this one EFTs. Okay, so I'm going to post the bank transfers into that batch. And I also am aware that in this week, um, we are also going to earn some interest at the bank as well. So I'll open a third batch and I'm going to call it, just for this week, interest. So this is where we will, we will post the interest uh, that we have earned uh, from the bank accounts that are interest bearing accounts. We are going to receipt that interest into a batch because that is how we record um, interest from from a bank. All right, so as you can see, I now have three batches for this Sabbath. So we are encouraging um, treasurers to open three different batches um, or two, uh, depending on what has happened. If there is no cash, you can even open the one for the EFTs. Let us separate the different uh, streams of income that we have or the different types of money collection that we have so that when we look at the balances, we do not get into any confusion. So let's quickly demonstrate how to use these three and how we are going to be able to receipt to them. So the first one I'm going to look at is the cash. So I'm going to click on the keyboard, which is where we uh, click to be able to do the receipting. And we received, say, for instance, loose offering on the Sabbath. And we'll come over here to automatically tell us that it will go into the loose offering. And the loose offering is this handled the same as we handle combined offering. 50% of the loose offering goes to the conference. 50% remains at our local church. So let's say in the plates on Sabbath, we counted the money, we collected 4,500. And once I do this and I say save receipt, now I have receipted the, the cash that we received on the Sabbath. Then in the offerings, uh, say for instance, uh, is just for as an example, Sitogo uh, Zilemoyo, he gave us a receipt and she said that there was a tight amount of uh, say 3,000 rand, we put the line, and then she also gave to the building fund. We now know that all of us, 55 is for the restricted offerings or the departments, direct departments of the church. Um, th that is for the church building. We do that and we come and we look for the church building account. We can just type building there. So she gave to the church building 4,000 uh, for the church building. And that is that. And then she also gave combined offering. So we also look for combined offering here. And then once we do that, we press enter. And then we put in the 1,200 that she gave for the combined offering. So in the envelope that she gave, there was 8,200 cash. So that is something to note. All right. So we continue doing this for all our cash uh, envelopes. And once we are done, and in this case, that means the treasurer has 12,700 in cash. So now let's go back to our batches so that we have a very clear picture. So in the cash batch, we have collected 12,700. The amount of cash that we have in, at hand, in hand should also be equal to the total of that batch. This will help us be able to track what happens to that money. So 
If I lock or close this batch, this money will automatically be posted into the receipted cash account. When I go and look at the receipted cash account, even on the home page, you will see that it will increase by 12,700. There is no other entry that is required when we capture receipted cash receipts. What I've just shown you now is exactly what you need. And that's the end of the story. All right. So now let's move to the more interesting ones, the EFTs, for instance. So I'll come and click on the little keyboard here. And I realized that uh, VM Chonchi, we said her tithe was 2000. Okay. And then I said her COVID, I'll just type 55 there. Uh, funds, that is the relief that we use to as a welfare fund to help uh, our church members who are in financial troubles due to COVID was 2000 And now we have 4000 that she did an EFT for, and I click re uh, save receipt. Now the receipt is here. So let's go back to the batches now. Now, say you have done all of the EFTs for, for that week, and you now realize the EFTs were 4000 uh, worth of uh, EFTs. Now, the second part of the EFT recording, what this does, now we are going, for those who are in accounting, we are doing the double entry now, we are also involving the actual recording to the bank. So we click on the dollar sign and we click on capture EFT or deposits or even mobile money for places that use mobile money. So when I click here, it will ask me, which account did we receive this money in so that it increases the balance of that account by the amounts we are going to enter here. And I will encourage um, us to use the descriptions and the breakdown of how the money was deposited in the bank so that when we introduce bank reconciliation, electronic automated bank reconciliations, they must be the same amount. I've had people asking me, can't I just lump all of the income that is in a batch and post? No, no, no. We need to enter line by line when we, whenever we deal with the bank account so that when we introduce bank reconciliation module, we will not have any challenges. So I happen to know that uh, Sister Viewer on the 8th um, of, uh, uh, of September, she then deposited an EFT of 4,000. And then I'll come here and I'll say Viewer, that's the description um, that I saw on the statement, uh, T and... Oh, and I say save. So now let's look at this. So I'll just click here on the X. So now, as you can see, the EFT amount that we receipted totals 4,000. That's what's in the receipts. This, this whole block is the receipts. Then in the EFT section here at the bank, we also have the 4,000. So once this page is like this, we can now lock it. And we are done with recording four. EFT's income that was given to the church via EFT into our bank account. So far, I think we are together. All right. So now let us look at interest. The church has uh, different accounts and one of the accounts and interest and we want to record it. We use the same receipting um, um, batches uh, as the Titan offering and the cash and the EFTs to also record interest. So here we go. So I'll click here on the keyboard. And as I click on the keyboard, now is where it becomes interesting. It's not a person that gave this money. It's interest earned by the bank. So we will automatically click not a member because <laughs> the bank is not a member of our church. Then I'll come here and I'll say ABSA fixed. 24. That's the account that we end interest from. And I'll say dash interest. Okay. So that is good. I press enter. The category, if you come and type financial here, you will find there's 52. It's called financial earnings. On the category, if you click here, you will find that category number 52 is financial earnings. So that's what we are going to use. Then I press enter. And then it will ask me, which department end this interest? So here is what is interesting. If, for instance, you have separated your funds, the building uh, fund, which is the common one, is in its own bank account. It, when it ends interest, that interest uh, belongs to the building uh, department or department project or project. So I'm going to come and click here 
and say, oh, this money was earned by the building. So I'll come here and I'll look for the building account. There we go, building project. And I press enter and I'll record now the amount that was earned for interest. Uh, it was 1982, it was 1982. I press enter, enter. And now I have recorded the interest that was earned into the fixed uh, APSA fixed uh, 12 account and the amount went into the building because it's, it belong, that money belongs for building. So that's the one that has earned the interest. And then let's go back to our batches now and have a look. So our batch here now has shown us the interest that we earned. Now we need to record the EFT side, which account now at the, on the bank side, which account has received this money. Then we come and we click on the test uh, fixed 12. And I say on the 9th or on the 10th, this is the amount that was received into this account as interest. And I come and I say interest here. Yeah, that's it. That's what it was saying on the statement. And then I say save. So what I have done is that we have receipted the interest, posted it into the department that's attached to the fund that earned the interest. If it's just the main bank account or the call account that is earning interest, then we will just put in the church budget. But in this case, it was the building fund that end this interest and we were able to do the receipt for it and I'll now show you how we can just quickly check. By the way, this little tick here, these boxes with ticks, we can use them to verify if our entries are correct. So here we go. We have one receipt, number one, which is has the name of the giver is ABSA uh, fixed 12 interest. The category where the money went is called financial earnings and the department that earned the money is called building project and the amount was and the total of this batch is 1982 all right so that is uh, what we wanted and we, we were also able to capture on the bank side so that the bank balance in our system was also increased by the amount of interest and and recorded so that is why we did this and we have the 1982 over here so this batch now is balanced the receipt is 182 and the um, bank is also 182. We can now come and close this batch and our, our books will be balanced. We will not have a situation where we have uh, accidentally um, uh, increased the, the receipt cash amount because something did not balance. This will help us to have clarity uh, as we work with, uh, with, this, we, we, with this system. All right, so let's just recap so that we, we are together. The receipted cash account does not need any other entries to be done. It's an automated system. When you open a batch and if you want to call it cash and you do not capture the EFT side, that money will automatically be posted into the receipted cash amount. So the, our receipted cash amount is going to increase by 12,700. And then our EFT um, batch is 4,000 rand. And if we click on the dollar sign here, we will notice that the EFTs that we presented for were 4,000. The e total EFT was also 4,000. This batch has now balanced. The EFT batch now equals the amount of EFTs that were collected. And then to verify, you can always click on this little uh, box with a tick so that you make sure that what you have captured is as you wished it to. So here, here we go. We had one receipt from uh, Sister Viewer here, and she gave tithe of 2,000, and she also gave to the relief. So this, this allocation is correct and is a reflection of what the giver wanted to give, and I am happy to say that this one is correct. So now I've verified that. And then I'm also going to look at the receipted cash one. I'm going to click on the little tick to make sure that the, 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 the allocations and the receipts are okay. So we have two of them. The first one was the loose cash that we that we received during the, the, the Sabbath, and it went into the loose offering, and it was 4,500. And then we also gave, uh, I mean, we also got a receipt from Sitogo Zile. She gave tithe, combined offering, and also gave to the building project, and the total was that. So the total amount of cash we have is 12,700. I hope this explanation helps us to understand um, 
how we can structure our batches in a way that will help us um, reconcile nicely and track how we received funds um, for a given week. And yes, you can open more than one batch on a particular Sabbath. So as you can see, I opened three batches in this one Sabbath, one for cash, one for EFT, and one for interest. I hope this will help us as we use the system. As we get more light and more interesting ideas, we'll be sharing with you on this channel. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe to this channel and we'll be able to receive any new videos that we record. Thank you so much for your time.